Peter Sam wanted to start work, but the thin controller wouldn't let him. Another day's rest will do you good, he said. Besides, I've got a surprise for you. For me, sir? How nice, sir. What is it, sir? Wait and see, smiled the thin controller. The surprise was Scarloey. Oh, said Peter Sam, I am glad you've come home. They lit Scarloey's fire, and he sizzled happily. I feel all excited, he said, just like a young engine. I'm longing to pull my dear old coaches again. Are they running nicely? Yes, they're running well, Peter Sam answered, but we have five other coaches now. Scarloey was interested. Oh, he said, tell me about them. Cora is a guards fan. She isn't as big as Beatrice, and she hasn't a ticket window, but I like her best. She was my guards fan in the old days. Ada, Jane, and Mabel are plain. They have no roofs. Sir Handel says they are trucks. But they have seats, said Peter Sam, so I say they're coaches. What do you think, Scarloey? The old engine smiled. If they have seats, they're coaches, he said firmly. Sir Handel likes Gertrude and Millicent best, Peter Sam went on. He always tries to take them alone. They have bogeys, and he says they're the only real coaches we have. They remind him of when he used to pull our express. Both have seats for passengers, but Millicent has a guard as well. He sells tickets and travels in a tiny cupboard place. I don't like that, he remarked earnestly. Guards are very important. They need vans. They shouldn't be put into cupboards. Scarloey said nothing, so Peter Sam continued. Did Rusty help you off your truck? Yes. He says he's come to mend the line and do odd jobs. I like him, smiled Scarloey. So do I. Peter Sam explained how kind Rusty was when he had his accident. It's a pity Duncan doesn't like him. Who's Duncan? He came as a spare engine after my accident. Is he useful? He'll pull anything, and I'm sure he means well, but he's bouncy and rude. He used to work in a factory, and his language is often strong. I understand, said Scarloey gravely. Just then, the telephone rang, and Scarloey's driver and fireman climbed into his cab. Come on, old boy, they said. Duncan is stuck in the tunnel, and we'll have to get him out. Scarloey was pleased. He wanted a run and looked forward to meeting Duncan. They found Cora and some workmen and hurried up the line. How nice and smooth the rails are, thought Scarloey. They've mended all the old bumps. Rusty has helped to do that. I must tell him how nice it is. Duncan had stuck at the far end of the tunnel. His coaches were outside, and the passengers were helping the driver and fireman to dislodge some rocks wedged between the top of his cab and the tunnel roof. Duncan was cross. I'm a plain blunt engine, he kept saying. I speak as I find. Tunnels should be tunnels and not rabbit holes. This railway is no good at all. Don't be silly, snapped his driver. This tunnel is quite big enough for engines who don't want to rock and roll. They cleared away the rocks, and Scarloey pulled Duncan and his coaches safely through. Cora was left on a siding, and the workmen stayed to make sure all was safe. Duncan grumbled all the way home, but Scarloey paid no attention. The thin controller was waiting for them. Listen to me, Duncan, he said. There is nothing wrong with that tunnel. You stuck because you tried to do rock and roll. If it happens again, I'll cut down your cab and your funnel, too. Duncan, abashed, was neither plain nor blunt for a whole evening.